Hey everyone, on today's video I'm going to review this, the Yashica TL Electro, an SLR from the early 70s, with a famous owner, none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. How cool is that? Let's find out! If you know a little about cameras, Yashica was never regarded as a professional camera brand, even though they had a comprehensive lineup from compacts, rangefinder, TLRs and also SLRs. They were regarded as amateur cameras but high quality, especially if you look at the price and compare them to what Minolta or Pentax was offering at the time. Yashikas were not cheap, they were very high quality. Now let's have a look at the camera itself. Well, it looks like a basic SLR from the early 70s. A full set of shutter speeds, self timer, depth of field preview, PC sync connector, a hot shoe for the flash, TTL metering, and that's it. But there's a small difference, and you may have noticed it. This add on symbol. Yeah, this is an electronic camera. Unlike a Pentax Potmatic or a Minolta SRT, this camera uses a chip. <laughs> there it is. And a look inside the viewfinder will show you how futuristic it is. You see these green tuning forks like shapes on the side? They show you over under exposure and correct exposure. Really easy to find out, making this camera really easy to handle in low light situations. The standard lens for this camera is the Otto Yashinon DSM 50mm 1.7. M4 multi coating, perfect for color picture. This lens is an excellent performer, if you ask me, especially if you compare it to a Super Takuma that was contemporary to this. Plus, the fact that it is M42 allows you to use uh, third party lenses like this one, accessories like macro rings to get macro shots, or this special contraption which is called the slide duplicator to duplicate slides. There you are. But you don't have to believe me, after all, there's a medieval fair in town, so we're gonna go there and try this out. One thing that really strikes me is how good the Yeshinon lens is. If you stop it down just a little bit, you'll get a very sharp image. Well, this lens definitely holds up to the standards of quality of a Takuma lens. Plus, you have to know that the exposure parameters are the ones that were suggested by the light meter. The camera works fine even in high contrast situations like these. Even though I used an expired film with this camera and the results are outstanding, this is really an excellent camera. There's a caveat for that, it's the batteries. This is the PX640 that was originally used for that camera and it's not available. You can find replacements online, they're hard to come by, or you can just get yourself an adapter and use a commonly used LR44. That's what I did with this. Plus, another feature of this camera is the Kony wheel. Just look at that, let's load up a film by popping up the back open. There you go. You see that the Kony wheel, it doesn't turn, only the inside is turning. Just insert the tip of the film onto one of these slots, and there you go. The camera is loaded. Fire the shutter a few times, until the counter reached number one. There you go. Believe me, lots of vintage cameras are not so easy to load as this one. That's a winner. Oh, my final thoughts on this camera? Well, this is a real banger. You know, if I had a camera like this when I started film photography, I would have been a happy camper. It's easy to use, it's a good performer, lenses are plenty and readily available. That's definitely a choice. And if you take into account that Pentax Spotmatics and other cameras are rising up in price, these are still readily available for a very decent price. So that's definitely a camera you should consider if you're looking for a film camera in 2023. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye.